Ukraine will be able to more successfully destroy S-300 and S-400 missile systems inside Russia. Ukrainian defense forces targeted and destroyed Russian S-300 and S-400 missile systems in Russia's Belgorod Oblast with HIMARS missile systems, aviation analyst Kostyantin Krivolap told Radio NV. Given the distance and direction, it fits perfectly, he said. Why else would there be S-300 and S-400 systems stationed there if we're not flying our planes or dropping bombs? It's clear that these launchers were firing at Kharkiv Oblast. While acknowledging the need to destroy such systems, Krivolap admitted that Russia has many of them. Ideally, F-16 jets should be deployed to eliminate these systems with JASSM missiles, as this would be the most effective solution, he said. Even if two Patriot systems were placed near Kharkiv, each ballistic missile would still require two interceptors given the system's design. He pointed out the cost disparity. An S-300 missile costs between $300,000 and $500,000, while Ukraine would need to spend $3 million on two interceptors for each S-300 missile. Krivolap also highlighted the scarcity of Patriot missiles globally. Even if every country contributed hit-to-kill missiles to Kharkiv Oblast, there would still be more S-300 missiles. Therefore, the focus should be on destroying the launchers themselves using ATACMS or air-to-ground missiles from F-16s. Ukrainian forces attacked the Russian city of Belgorod with HIMARS multiple rocket launch systems just hours after the White House approval limited strikes on Russian territory using American weaponry, Forbes reported. U.S. President Joe Biden authorized limited strikes on Russian territory using American-made weapons. This decision came under pressure from advisers and key allies, the New York Times reported on May the 31st, citing unnamed White House officials. The White House gave Ukraine the green light to carry out such strikes, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken confirmed the same day. Next, Russia's target in Europe, Norway's Svalbard Archipelago. Moscow may target Norway's Svalbard Archipelago, also known as Spitsbergen, in its first direct attack on a NATO country. The ambiguity surrounding Svalbard's status within the alliance could divide NATO on whether a Russian move would trigger Article 5, the Collective Defense Clause. Moscow's interest in Svalbard, a demilitarized region, has grown because of Norway's imposition of sanctions, global warming, and Russian concern about defending the western entrance to the northern sea route. Russian interest in the area has intensified because China has joined Russia in using Svalbard for research. Access to Svalbard's coal has become more important, and a vast privately owned parcel of land is now for sale. Paul Goebel, a former U.S. State Department expert on the countries of the former USSR and ex-CIA analyst, provides a detailed explanation in an article for the Jamestown Foundation. Given Moscow's aggressive rhetoric about NATO and threats to attack one or more of its members if the West continues to support Ukraine, many in Russia and the West have been speculating about where such a Russian move might occur. Most have focused on Poland, the Baltic countries and Finland as possible targets, but perhaps the most likely one is elsewhere, the Svalbard archipelago. Svalbard is part of Norway, a NATO member, but is demilitarized by the provisions of the 1920 Svalbard Treaty, which has currently been signed by 46 countries, including the US, Norway and France. Because of that agreement, NATO remains deeply divided as to whether, in the case of a Russian attack, all the members of the alliance would want to invoke the provisions of Article 5 of the NATO Charter, which requires alliance members to view an attack on one as an attack on all. That division, of which Moscow is well aware, may lead the Kremlin to decide that an attack on Svalbard is less risky than an attack on any other NATO country. The island has fewer than 3,500 residents, of whom approximately a fifth are Russians and a handful are Chinese. Because of its isolation, Svalbard was one of the last European territories whose status remained undefined into the 20th century, with various countries, including Norway, Sweden and Russia, using it as a base for shipping and mining and even claiming it as their own. In 1920, however, the Western powers, without Russia's participation, signed a treaty that declared that Norway had sovereignty over the islands, but required that Oslo kept 
the archipelago demilitarized and permitted the development of other national communities, including, most prominently, the Russians. 